Hey YouTube, welcome to the video. I'm working on some 308 Winchester 150 grain Nossler partitions. So these partitions are, are not a, a boat tail. They just are, they're just like a straight shank with the, the spitzer, like the, the rounded uh, tip. And so your boat tail would be like this barns right here with the, with the taper at the end. And that's what helps the barns get a higher BC. But this Nossler partition has that straight shank, no boat tail, just a spitzer. And having that partition in it, that copper copper wall in the middle helps the bullets stay together. And like Nossler says, 1800 feet per second minimum. So we can stay well above 1800 feet per second. So for components here, we'll be using once fired Lapua brass, Federal Premium Gold Middle Match Primers, and Varget gunpowder. To get loaded up here, I use my RCBS uh, primer system, uh, Lyman uh, Gen 6 scale. For press, I'm using the Lyman All American 8 turret press. For sizing my Lupua 308 wind brass, using the Redding Type S bushing style die. It's a full length die. And what's different about this than your normal 308 dies or, or other redding or other dies is that it have, takes a bushing. So this little bushing right here, you can see it's 0.335. So I measured a loaded case with Lapua brass that I already have. And I came up with this measurement here uh, as a thousandth of an inch under my, to, to get a thousandth of an inch neck tension. I'm not using the expander button because I'm, I'm just, this is just a bolt gun. There's no need to to fix a dented case or whatever. And the instructions show to, to turn it all the way down and then give it like an eighth of a turn to allow it to uh, self uh, center in there. So you can hear it. So that's all set. For bullet seating, I'm using the Reading National Match competition seating die. So on Nossler's website, they refer to all their 150 grain bullets on one page. And we can see here they have a, a rather short uh, overall length for their partition. They show um, a little bit longer than the expansion tip, their E-tip, which is another copper bullet like the Barnes. Uh, but the partition they show 2.77 inch overall length. But for a powder charge of Varget, they show up to 46 and a half grains. So what I did was I loaded 44 grains up to 46 and a half with Varget in half grain increments. So my first group I shot at 100 yards. Faster. What? That's a mile per hour faster. Second. Twenty-eight seventeen. Yeah. That's pretty uh, close to what they said. That's thirty-two more. So I didn't have very good groups at 100 yards with the Nossler partitions. That was under two inches. So this was 45 and a half grains. And if I look at the data from the chronograph, my, my extreme spread was under 10 along with the standard deviation, which is about five, which is really good. So I called Nossler and I told Nossler, I'm getting really good chronograph results, but I'm not getting under an inch. And they said I should be able to get under an inch. 
and this was, I believe, Mike at Nossler. So he said, try seating the bullet closer to the land, but go in, in the increments at the same charge weight. Um, I haven't really loaded that close to the lands before. I'm still not the greatest at reloading. And I took the Hornady overall gauge and that's a Barnes in there, but I put my Nosler in, Nosler partition. I put it up to my lands. I found the lands at 2.93. I loaded another set of five shot groups, 0.2 grains below and 0.2 grains above my best charge weight. And I also loaded a few shooters just to make sure I'm not having any uh, pressure seating closer to the lands. This is the group that I shot at 100 yards just to make sure I'm not having over pressure. But you can see the groove actually tightened up. Uh, I got six inside 1.75 inches. But that's increasing charge weight. So this lowered these, these three shots here. You know, I probably could find a powder charge that's, that's good there. But I wanted to test the node at 200 yards. So looking at the target after shooting 200 yards, I have, we can see I have a pretty darn good ES number still. The target, you know, I got most of them within an inch. I grabbed all my chrono numbers in Excel, Y axis speed, X axis charge weight. And we can see between 45.3 and 45.2, there's a velocity flat spot and the ES numbers look fairly good still. I looked through the video footage when I shot at 200 yards and this is seated 0.11 inch from my lands. I have one, two, three, four bullets all in an, all in an inch here. That's, that's great. And this one flyer off to the left here. Um, and still, including that, outside to outside, 2.3. 2.3 inch at 200 yards Nosler partition. That is awesome. I'm certain I can load this up at 100 and get a five shot group under an inch. Uh, that's what I considered a final load. Um, the lower charge weights at closer to the lands didn't shoot very good at all. I This one group here, um, blue, 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 blue. This was the closest to the lands, 0.04 inch from the lands. So an over four inch group and then these two this one and that one and over here it's another four inch plus group um so i found my seating depth i found my charge weight for nosler partitions now that i was honest here i was quite reluctant to shoot 200 yards with the nosler partitions but after shooting the ciders at 100 yards getting less than two inches i was Quite excited. I'm looking forward to maybe drawing a tag this year in Texas for deer or nil guy. And I'll tell you all, this was a real head scratcher. I wasn't sure what to do, but I'm really happy I called Nosler and got help from them. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you enjoy the variety of outdoor content I create, I do hunting, fishing, some reloading. And again, thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.